indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we go through each day, bring the truth of your word to our minds and help us to apply your wisdom to our decisions. Today, we ask for your guidance to do right by all. For this we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Next, we have proclamations. We have a proclamation from our partners at DHR proclaiming uh, September 23rd as National Leukemia, Lymphoma, and Melanoma Awareness Month. Great. Great. Okay. Commissioner, going to read it. Uh, whereas approximately three minutes, every three minutes, one person in the U.S. is diagnosed with leukemia, lymphoma, or myeloma. And whereas an estimated combined total of 184,720 people in the United States are expected to be diagnosed with leukemia, lymphoma, or myeloma in 2023. And whereas a new case, new cases of leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma are expected to account for 9.4% of the estimated 1,958,310 new cancer cases that will be diagnosed in the U.S. in 2023. And whereas the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society maintains three offices in the state of Texas to support patients with these diseases and their family members. And whereas the Advanced Care Center is similarly committed to the eradication of these diseases and supports the treatment of the citizens that suffer from them. And whereas the Advanced Care Center encourages private efforts to enhance research to enhance research funding and education programs that addresses these diseases. Now, therefore, I, Ambrosio Hernandez, Ramiro Caballero, in behalf of Ambrosio Hernandez, Mayor of the City of Fart, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me in behalf of the City Commission, do hereby proclaim September 2023 as Leukemia, Lymphoma, and Myeloma Awareness Month. Great. Thank you. Introduce, uh, uh, first of all, Honorable Mayor, uh, City Council, we want to make sure that we want to thank for allowing us to be here today on behalf of DHR Health. My name is Mario Liscano. I'm your Administrator of Corporate Affairs for DHR Health. I'm joined by our advanced care team and also by a volunteer and also survivor that's with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So I'd like <coughs> to pass the mic on to Ms. Clara Chapa, who will give us a few words on behalf of the advanced care center. And like always, thank you to the city of FAR for our efforts as we will go ahead and inform, educate, and make sure that we bring awareness when uh, issues, proclamations, or anything that has to do with the wellness of our community uh, comes ab abroad, that we are, we're always grateful for your support. With you is Ms. Clara. Good afternoon. It's an honor to gather here today amongst the City of Our Commission and its constituents. And today we gather here to shed light on these blood cancers that affect the lives of so many. In the fight against these diseases, awareness is key. Statistics show that Hispanics under the age of 20 have the highest rates of incidence. This cancer impacts not only the individuals battling them, but also their families and their loved ones. By designating September as Leukemia Lymphoma Cancer Awareness Month, DHR Health is showing its commitment to raising awareness about these conditions, supporting those who are affected, and fostering a sense of unity in our community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, uh, I want to make sure that we also give her a little bit to say hello and, and a few words because she is one of the uh, volunteers that's here with us today. Hi, good afternoon, and thank you so much for all that you're doing for the Leukemia and Lymphomas uh, community. Uh, my name is Molly Nahosa, and I am a 24-year survivor. I had three days to live back in 1999, but with the help of the doctors of God and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, I am here today and uh, I make myself available as well to help the patients that are coming in uh, and help them with their cancer journey. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us here. My name is Ruby Tanguma. I'm one of the patient navigators at Oncology Institute. And I'm also glad to be part of this awareness fund. Um, so if you all can just um, have us in mind, you know, for our patients that suffer through all these diagnosis of cancer. Great. Thank you. Can, can you expand for the public? 
what is a patient navigator? So a patient navigator actually helps the patients out with any type of cancer to help them out with resources, um, find anything that will be able to, you know, um, get them and guide them through their process through their journey so that way they won't be you know having that load on their back to you know so we're basically part of them as they go through that journey great well you're going to have a soon you're going to have a partner at uh, city of far when it comes to patient navigation uh dr cabrera one commissioner as you know he's a neonatologist um and he works at the uhs uh, the medical center and group and regional as well so we see patients from all over that come mm -hmm. back home to city of far and our your partner's gonna be our health department. We're, we're launching a health department for that reason. A lot of our clients, mm -hmm. right, in healthcare are residents of FAR, and that's our priority. They come home and sometimes they're lacking resources, they're lacking education, yeah. even up from a preventive standpoint, right? And so, and especially after treatment, and they need to be able to understand what they're at risk of, right? And also when, uh, with a Zika virus or COVID or something else coming out, how it affects them, and also the, the most vulnerable population. So you're going to find that uh, the city of Fall will be launching a health department. We'll be awesome. reaching out to all, all the organizations to be sure that when our patients, uh, which is our population for FAR, utilizes the health system, it still continues within our health department to be sure that they're taken care of. So awesome. just so you know. Good to hear. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, I just want to take a minute yes. to give a recognition to our patient navigators because they are a huge asset to the Oncology Institute. They serve as a liaison between the patients and the doctors. You know, when people get this diagnosis, they're, they have so many questions, they're overwhelmed, they don't really know what to begin asking. So the navigators serve as their point of contact for finance, financial resources, questions about medication, just helping them follow up with them after their appointments, after their treatment. So they do a tremendous job for us. Thank you. Congratulations. Good. Yes, we'll get to the photo with you. <coughs> I forgot my name though. Yes, correct. So next we have a proclamation proclaiming September 11, 2023 as remembering and honoring the 22nd anniversary of September 11 at Vanguard Academy. So we have great. So do we have somebody from Vanguard Academy? Sorry? We have somebody to accept this? Yes. Do you want to come over here? Yeah, in the center. Yes. I remember, what's your hotel? Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Vanguard Academy, we'd like to thank you for everything that you do for us, that amazing partnership and collaboration. When it comes to our kids, is the best. Champions of education. We value education. 
partnership collaboration effort that we all have to make our kids the best. So we remember, remember 9-11, 22 years ago, right? A lot of people have forgotten, but we have not forgotten. We remember it. Not only is it Patriot Day, but it's, it's also what we would consider National Day of Service. So for law enforcement, um, all the people that are first responders always are on call to serve. We thank them. And also to volunteer. We want to teach our kids about the importance of volunteering. So here with me are some of the amazing principals that we have at Vanguard Academy. I'm Ray Perez. I teach uh, history for Vanguard, uh, history professor. And this is Ms. Good afternoon, Angelica Martinez, principal of Vanguard Mozart Welcome. Secondary in Alamo. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. Jose Gonzalez, I'm the principal at uh, Beethoven Secondary in Edinburgh. Good afternoon, Dina Cano, Principal at Vanguard Rembrandt Secondary here in FAR. And like Mr. Um, Betta said, we do appreciate all your efforts as a city. Um, our kiddos go to you all for summer internships. Um, they get to get firsthand work. And so now just granting them this opportunity with a proclamation will really bring it to life. Some of us were witnesses, or all of us were witnesses, to what happened that devastating day. And so we want to make sure that they know that turning point for our country mm -hmm. and to ensure to be why law enforcement is so important, why firefighters are so important, EMT, just everybody that's in the line of service, um, just because of that devastating day. And so we want to make sure that we keep it alive for them. Um, and what better them serving those that serve them? Well said. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Okay. Whereas the city of FAR and all its residents desire to express their sorrow for the 22,983 20, people who died in Manhattan at the Pentagon and in Pennsylvania Field on September 11, 20, 2001, in what remains the deadliest act of terrorism in U.S. history. And whereas the land of the free, while grief-stricken, became one nation, united, resolved, and determined. And whereas the terrorists not only attacked American institutions and culture, cultural history, they also attacked America's principles, and we the people. And where the city of FAR and Vanguard Academy honor individuals and families who were directly affected by the September 11, 2001 tragedy. And whereas we, the American people, will keep the flame of freedom lit for those Americans that died in this tragedy. And whereas in the city of FAR, its neighboring cities, and Vanguard Academy also honor and recognize local heroes who contributed to improving the quality of life for everyone here at home. Now, therefore, I, Ambrosio Hernandez, Mayor of the City of FAR, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me and on behalf of the entire city commission, do hereby proclaim September 11, 2023 as remembering and honoring the 22nd anniversary of September 11th at Vanguard Academy. In witness here, whereunto I hereon to set my hand and cause the seal of the city of FAR to be affixed on this fifth day of September, 2023. There you go, boss. Okay. Next, we have public testimony. Is there anybody? No, sir. No one signed up. What about public hearings? None. Okay, under city manager's report, mayor and commission, in your packet, you'll have the city engineer's report. If you all have any questions, Mr. Alfaro is here to answer them. Okay. All right, next, we'll have Yudi come up for the city events of interest. Thank you, Linda. Good afternoon, Commission, Mayor Yuri Gonzalez, Office of City Communications Director. For the record, this is just a time to remind our community about upcoming events. We have a special event approaching this Friday, and it's called the Stick By Me. This event is spearheaded by the FAR Police Department under the Health Unit, Mental Health Unit. And this is a time where we're inviting our entire community to come out and bring awareness to those 
that have committed suicide. Yes, it's a very sensitive subject, but it is a reality. Um, we actually have Chief Gonzalez here if he wants to elaborate on this. But this is the third year that this event is happening. This will be taking place, as you see on the screen, at the FAR Vanguard Academy and Birding uh, Nature Center. Yes. So what we do is the community comes together, we'll have special guests, we'll have information, but everybody gets a glow stick. This glow stick is meant to represent the life of that person that is no longer with us. So at the end, they break that glow stick, but that's a symbol that that person is still glowing in our hearts. So it's a beautiful event. It's happening for the third year. We just want to invite everybody to come out and it's really nice. I was there last year. This happens at night. And, you know, it's just a reminder that we have the resources, we have the team, and we have a great police department that can help our community when it comes to suicide and people in crisis. Wonderful. Um, okay. And we also have a quick recap. And this is an event that took place a week and a half ago. This was spearheaded through Luis with the Far International Bridge. And this is a Industrial Warehouse Summit recap. It's a great time to invest in the city of FAR. The industrial landscape in FAR is seeing a major growth. And at the forefront is Luis Vassan, director of the FAR International Bridge, along an entire team of innovative leaders, city commissioners, and mayor, Dr. Ambrosio Hernandez. The surge of commercial crossings at our bridge is what led Vassan to create the Industrial Warehouse Summit. We launched the series back in April. Uh, to raving reviews and a lot of commitment from a lot of the, the major players that are here today. The series gained major traction, leading Massan and his team to host the second part, the IWS2. Topics ranged from trade development, construction opportunities, incentive programs, the bridge expansion, and the need for crucial warehouse space used for storage and distribution. Right now, warehouse space is, is very limited. I believe there's about 97 or 98 capacity right now. So there's only about 2 or 3% left. Basan says supply chain issues is one of the reasons for the low warehouse space. So what's happening, a lot of suppliers are, are keeping inventory, larger amounts of inventory in warehousing space in order to be ready with that supplies, with those materials in case it is needed instead of waiting around months, maybe years, for those supplies to finally get there. As storage space drops, so does the opportunity to distribute. The Industrial Warehouse Summit looks to combat that issue by highlighting the city of FAR and the great opportunities for investors. A major selling point is the bridge expansion, one that is already in the works. It's going to promote businesses to not spend a lot of time in their crossing. So we're going to cut their crossing time down which Less time for the drivers on their trucks, uh, less diesel on their trucks. Un evento muy importante para nosotros, la parte mexicana, porque vemos que están exponenciando mucho la Info y Expo. Entonces, el, el crecimiento que ha tenido FAR con el nuevo proyecto del puente es muy atractivo para la parte mexicana, para poder competir con otras fronteras como Laredo o otros lugares. Part 3 of the series is set to take place in November 2023. At the end of the day, that will help the state, that will help the nation, and it will help us internationally as well. The FAR International Bridge continues to be the leading port of entry in the nation when it comes to commercial crossings. Stay tuned as the city of FAR gets ready to host multiple events this fall under the FAR International Bridge umbrella. Great job. All right, next we have our, we have item six, our consent agenda. All items listed under consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the governing body and will be enacted by one motion. Okay, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. All right, next we're gonna skip over to item 9A. I'm going to ask Melanie to come up. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, Mayor Commissioners. For the record, Melanie Cano. I am the Office of Organization on Strategic Excellence Director. 
I am with you today to go over the budget priority citizen survey for 23-24. Um, as you recall, we've been doing this for, this is our third year now. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way for us to gauge citizen input and provides valuable data that helps us determine the proposed budget year. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started. For the methodology, respondents were asked to identify a top priority area from the following strategic priorities. Now, these look very familiar because they're aligned directly with our strategic plan, okay? And they include service excellence, city infrastructure, quality of life, economic development, and safe and secure community. So once, they're, once they select a priority area, they then select a focus area that's directly from that, pri that priority area, the main strategic objective. And please stop me if you have any questions because I tend to go fast. Do they get to respond? I mean, ad lib, they can write things down or? They... At the end, there is a uh, an additional feedback and they do provide um, information should they choose. Okay. Yeah. I have a question real quick. Yes, sir. When they do it, do they number them like this is my one, two, one, two, three, four, five, or one, five, four, three, or whatever? No, they select. Rank what, they're, what, they're, what they're thinking. Because if you just put one, then we're just going to know what. The way we structured the survey and um, the first year we did it, we did do that. But there were so many options that we didn't get a good response. We didn't get that many surveys because it's just a lengthy survey. So what we ended up doing here, we condensed it so that way it can align with our strategic plan and they choose one specific priority area. Okay. But if that's something that the commission wishes to do for the next following years, I mean, we're all about a culture of continuous improvement. So we can definitely do that. So we'll go ahead and jump right into our demographics. This right here is the respondents. 40.1% of the respondents are from the north side. That translates to 594 and then central 518 and south 370. What's considered north? North side is considered from Owasa all the way up to Frontage. From Frontage? Yes. Got it. And then from Frontage to Javelina is central and then Javelina to military, military is south. Is south. Mm -hmm. okay. So 47.4% in terms of the age groups are ages 25 to 44. That's what we had the most respondents. And I'm sorry, I might have jumped ahead. Did you do it by gender as well? No. Okay. Um, I, I skipped this slide, I'm sorry. Um, so we ended up with a total of uh, 1,408 responses. And that was an increase from last year, an increase of 10%. So in terms of our top priority for citywide, 31.3% chose public safety, and that includes all of our public safety departments, police, fire, EMS, emergency management, um, 911. And then we have quality of life that came in at 26.6%, city infrastructure at 16.9, and then we have service excellence and economic development both at 12.6%. Now, in this case, in terms of the comparison from last year to this year, nothing really changed other than the top two, which was the pub public safety and quality of life. Last year, we had quality of life at number one and public safety at number two. So, and the rest was pretty much very similar. So this is where they choose a focus area for those priorities. So for service excellence, 60.2% chose city operations and services. And then we move on to infrastructure, stormwater and drainage, 32.4% chose that as their focus. For quality of life, 35.5% chose parks and rec, and that includes our athletic and recreational programs. For economic development, 27.1% chose downtown area development, and 44.8% chose police services as their focus area for public safety. That's in line with our investments we've been doing for the last eight years. That's correct. That's good. Yes. So now in terms of segmenting, this is these are the demographics for North Far. 26.3% is between 35 to 44. The top two age groups came out at 51.1%, and that is from age groups 25 to 44. And then in terms of the top priority relating specifically North Far, Again, 32.5 public safety, followed by 22.4. Service excellence at 17.2, city infrastructure at 15.5, and economic development at 
As you can see, nothing really changed other than the bottom three. Okay. And then in terms of the focus area, again, city operations and services at 70.3. For the north side, they selected city roadways as the focus area at 31.6%. And then 34.6% for parks and recreation, quality of life. 26.3 for business retention and attraction, and then for public safety, police services again at 44, 40, 40, 44%. So now we move on to Central FAR. In Central FAR, 23.6 were between the ages of 25 to 34. 46.3% were between the age groups of 25 to 44. So those are the two top age groups. And then for top priority for Central FAR, again, we have public safety at 30.1%. Then we have 29.9 quality of life, city infrastructure 18.3, economic development at 12.4, and service excellence at 9.3. So in terms of the focus area for Central FAR, 50% chose city operations and services, 33% chose stormwater drainage, 33.3 parks and rec, 37.3 downtown area development, 48.4% for uh, public safety chose police services. Now for South Farm, 22.5% of the respondents were between the ages of 35 to 44. 43.9%, this one shifted a little for the age group of 35 to 54. So those were the two top age groups. Now in terms of the top priority, public safety again came top at 30.8, followed by quality of life at 28.7, city infrastructure at 17%, and then we have economic development at 13.2 and service excellence at 10.3. The focus areas 46.2, city operations and services, 34.9% stormwater and drainage, 40.6% again parks and rec, and then we have 34.7 for new retail and entertainment options, and then 40.9% for police services again at, in public safety. So the last question of the survey asked for the top priority, would you support paying more taxes or fees to improve the quality of these focus areas and priority areas? As you can see, it's pretty much 50 and 49.6, so 50-50. 744 respondents chose yes, 731 would not support tax increase. Right. We have that divided into north, south. We have that information. I can provide that. I have it. Sure. Yeah. And just a reminder, I know that last year one of the issues that came up was the tax increase. The question was not specific last year. That's the, that's the one that had the most significant change because last year, the wording of the tax question, it was more of, do you support additional funding? And as you may recall, the topic of discussion that time was, we needed to be more direct and ask, would you or would you not support taxes? But other than that, I mean, the, the changes were really, like I mentioned, the quality of life and safe and secure community. Any questions? Did you have any in your demographics below 25 or above 55? We did have a few. As you can see, for instance, in South Far, under 18, 30, and then we have 18 to 24 age group, 40 respondents. So we did have a few surveys come out in that age group. Can next year, can you specifically target the, the outlier sites, mm -hmm. like the younger and the older? Yeah. Because I would think they would think differently. They did. And uh, that would give you a bigger, better picture of everybody in part. Yes, so I, and I have that information too. Um, I just wanted to show an overview of the segmentation, the demographics, but we can definitely provide that information. Any other questions? No, it's good. Okay. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Carla who will present the budget. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the City of Far Budget Workshop for fiscal year 2023-2024. I promise I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. Um, I'm going to try to make this presentation a little bit basic 101. 
since we have a new commissioner and for the public out there. So a lot of the terminology that I'm going to use, I'm going to try to make it more relatable to the public and, and to you as well. So the things that we're going to go over today, the items to be discussed, we're going to talk about general fund, the utility fund, our EMS, our team for that net, our FAR international bridge, which is my favorite, and of course, and I'm going to give a little bit brief summary of our citywide debt towards the very end. Now, again, to remind the public, the general fund, the general fund, what that is, I guess you keep holding maybe general fund, general fund, so what is it? The general fund is the main operating fund that any city or school district has that accounts for the core functions. So in the city's case, this is your public safety, your culture and recreation, your streets, and your health. And of course, you know, overall the general administration. But when you think, when you talk about general fund, think about police department, fire department, public works, parks and recreations, municipal court, etc. Now, like any fund, any city, we all have sources of revenue, right? So I'm gonna talk about the major sources of revenue that the city's general fund has. I'm gonna concentrate in the top three. As in any other city or school district, the top number one source of revenue is of course property taxes. The number two is sales taxes. And the number three is what we call transfers in. What transfers in is or means it's their contributions from other funds that the city has. So those three make up for the major sources of revenue for the city. Now, let's jump into the property taxes. The property taxes are determined by the net taxable value certified by the, uh, by the Hidalgo County Appraisal District. So I usually present this slide so that you can see the net taxable value, which means the value, the market value of all the properties for the city of Far, all your houses or your buildings, everything. So this year, the values, what the city of Far properties are worth is $4.77 billion compared to 4.16 from last year. I usually do this pie chart so that you can see what the 4.77 billion it's spread out, right? So 56.6% is residential, it's houses, 32.6 is commercial, and the rest is uh, divided among vacant lots and inventory, etc. I would like to point out that the 56.6% that you see, two to two years ago, two, three years ago, was around in the 40%. So that tells us that in the last two years, there has been you know, more residential, more subdivisions, more apartment complexes coming into the city of Far. Now, the 4.77 billion compared to the 4.16 of last year equals a 14.47% increase. Out of that 47%, uh, 2.61% of the growth, it's actual new property. That translates to an approximately $125 million in new property just this year. Now, I would like for you to see the trend of the growth in taxable value for the last six years. I'm starting with 1819, all the way to, of course, our next budget year, 2324. If you notice, I guess what I would like to show, what I'm trying to communicate to you is that if you notice the growth, it's relatively steady, you know, plus three, minus 3%. Once we hit from 2021, 22 to 22, 23, we see a kind of jump into the, into the double digits. Once you hit anything above 10%, pretty much increase, like pretty much um, 
says inflation, right? So as everybody knows, and after the pandemic, the construction market skyrocketed. So obviously that means that everybody's houses, house values went up. And I don't think any of you can say the opposite. When you saw the tax bill, pretty much your home value went up. So just for you to, you know, just to understand that sometimes the value they increase, we have no control. The city of Par has no control of that. A lot of that means it's because of the market and the economy out there. Any questions on, on this? Yeah, I have a question. Well, but as, as we grow and we're getting ready to do our second expansion on the bridge, we have many companies coming to invest into our ETJ. Is there any way we can track that? Um, how much tax are we gaining for warehouses or any development happening in our ETJ? Most definitely, yes. I can start requesting that detailed information. It's, it can be up, obtained from the count, uh, Hidalgo County Appraisal District. So it, it is something that we can track. Especially those that, I know we have a line item here that we are annexing certain properties and how that helps the city of Far. Oh, tax-wise. Yes. Yes, sir. So, again, property taxes, it's um, determined by the net taxable value, and obviously that is not the only factor. The other factor is the property tax rate. So now let's take a look at the city of Far tax rate. I also want to show you uh, history, and I'm going back all the way to 2014. Now, any, even 10 years before 2014, all the way to 2015, the tax rate had been 0.68 cents. As you notice, in 2016, you all adopted to lower the tax rate. We were able to maintain it all the way, you know, low, all the way to uh, fiscal year 2019. And because the city started implementing its capital improvement project uh, plan aggressively, you know, everything has a cost. So in the year 2020, we were in the need to raise the property tax to 0.7176 cents. Now moving forward four years now, for fiscal year 2023-2024, we're proposing to increase an additional five cents to the current tax uh, rate. Now, those five cents, I want to point out that it's um, going to be increased in the interest and sinking portion of the tax rate, or what we call INS. Now, what does that mean? What does INS mean? I'm going to give a 101 on how tax rate works. This applies to, again, all local governmental entities. All the tax rates get divided, get split into two, two parts. One, it's to fund the maintenance and operations. And the other part, it's to fund the interest in sinking, which is the portion that, pay, that pays for the debt. So in this case, I guess the city of our tax rate proposing a 0.7676 cents, 0.5615, it's going to go to the maintenance and operations, which is going to be used to pay for all the, again, operations. And 0.2061, it's going to go to generate revenue uh, to pay for the city's debt and to issue additional debt. Now, based on the appraised value that we have and with this tax rate, what does that mean in numbers? So the revenue expected to be generated from property taxes for next fiscal year, it's a total of $34.77 million. Based on the split that the city tax rate has, 25.44 is gonna go for maintenance and operations and 9.33, it's going to go for the interest and sinking, which is to pay for the debt. That equals 2.76 more 
than this fiscal year 22-23 for the general fund or for the maintenance and operations. And for the debt service, it's going to be 3.32 more than last year. That $3.32 million, it's what's going to help us issue an additional $50 million to cover for existing and new projects coming to the city of FAR. Now, what does this mean for the tax, for the FAR resident? I'm a FAR resident myself, so, but I'm the finance director, right? So I, I understand clearly how this change works. But for anybody out there, for the tax resident, I just want to highlight and make sure that you all understand that when you receive your tax bill, it's not the city of FAR just taxing you. You're paying the school district, you're paying, you're paying the county, you're paying the irrigation district. Obviously, we are there also. But there's only, the city of FAR can only control our tax rate. We cannot control anybody else's entity's tax rate, and we definitely cannot control the appraised value of your house. The only thing that we can control is the, far, the, the tax rate that we're proposing. So in this table, I just want to show you, give you an example, and the far resident to see, depending on your home value, how much difference of how much of an increase means those five cents. So for example, if your house is valued $125,000, according to the appraisal district, you will be paying an additional $62.50 a year. Again, this is only the FAR portion only, which is the one thing that we can control. Now, if you divide the $62.50, that equals to $5.21 a month. So, you know, just to put it in perspective, so that this, the, the FAR resident understand you know, the monetary difference that it means that tax rate increase. Any questions so far? Okay. Now, where is this money going? The $50 million that we're proposing with a tax rate increase. We're not increasing it just because, right? There's a reason where this, the money is going. So I'm showing here two tables so that you can see the projects that are currently in place. And again, inflation has hit us really, really hard and outrageously in the construction mainly, in the like the market. Prices for labor, for wood, for paint, for everything. Again, high skyrocket. And overall, the cost of, you know, construction itself. We have, uh, where's Ruben? Ruben, our city engineer, can attest to that. We have, um, we have sat together and gone over those projects. And if you notice, for those three projects, for those, hello, hello, can you hear me? Can it be heard in the, okay, I'm just gonna continue. But I just wanna make sure that the public hears though. Yeah, no. Here, 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 here. Yeah, I don't know what probably the better. Thank you. So again, for this, those three existing projects, you can see that it adds up $20 million alone. It's due to updated costs. And it's, it might sound crazy, but it is. Now, the other table, I'm showing the projects that are about to start. That it's, again, for the better quality of the citizens of FAR. And that's another $30 million, you know. Just to remind everybody, the public out there, that everything has a cost, everything costs money. And we kind of tend to forget about that, but you know, roads, labor, everything, everything has a cost. Now that's all I have for property taxes. 
Are there any specific questions before I move on? If not, I'm gonna jump into the second major source of revenue for the city of R, which is sales taxes. Again, damn inflation, right? Obviously, sales taxes, it's the one source of revenue that it gets, obviously, we are directly affected by the economy out there. So prices are up, everything goes up, and people, of course, buy less. So in this table, what I wanna show you is the number that the city projected for this fiscal year based on previous trends, even though after the pandemic and everything, the, the sales taxes were actually, you know, doing good. This year is when we felt a little bit more of a hit. So we're about to finish the, the year. We have just one month away. So we're expected to be at 21.68 collection in sales taxes compared to 22.56 that we originally budgeted. So that's almost $900,000 less, which for the city general's fund, it is a material amount. Now, again, this is just to show you the trend. The 22-23, like I mentioned, we're gonna be at 21.68 million. So we're trying to be conservative because even though we didn't meet budget, we are collecting more than the previous year. We're still collecting more. So obviously we still expect a little bit of growth, but we're being conservative and we're proposing only a 2% increase or $22.11 million for next fiscal year. Now the third major source of revenue, which is our contributions from other funds. Not much to say here, just to remind you, you know, are the other funds that contribute to the general fund, as always, our golden child, the Fire International Bridge, which thank you, Luis, you know, for doing such a great job. And if you can see, $9.6 million, it's transferred from the bridge into our general fund as a major source of revenue. And just to remind the public out there also that the bridge actually because of these transfers and because the commission chooses to transfer that money into the city's general fund is that the tax rate can also be maintained at a certain level because if it wasn't for these contributions the city tax rate could actually be higher so um, we have our foreign international bridge contributing our partner, the Far Economic Development Corporation, the Paving and Drainage Fund, and the Hotel and Motel Fund, which generates um, hotel taxes. So all of these funds contribute a total of $11.6 million compared to 12.2, 12.1 from last year. It's a little bit of a decrease of $485,200, but obviously it's still material, and that makes up for the contributions from other funds to the general fund. Now, overall, I'm not gonna go into detail into every single source of revenue, because like again, I, like I said at the beginning, there's three main ones that are worth talking about. So putting everything together, this is how our proposed budget revenues are gonna look like. $76.56 million compared to 69.73, which is an increase of 9.81%. Just to uh, make a clarification, those $66.56 million includes debt proceeds. Those debt proceeds are used to, for one-time purchases only. And this is, this is something that we have every year, but it's not operational revenue. Any questions on the revenues before I move on to the fun part of the budget, which are the expenditures? Yeah. 
So this is the money coming in, but you know, I wish we can keep it. We can't. All the money coming in goes out. So no questions? Okay. Let's move on to the expenditures. Just to remind everybody, again, like any other company, personnel, it's the major source of expenditure where the money goes, right? So for the City of Far General Fund, 61% of our expenditures is for our personnel. You know, that includes, of course, benefits. So with that being said, since it's, it's the material what makes up for most of the expenditures, I would like to point out that for this coming fiscal year, there's only restructuring of personnel. There are no additional positions being proposed, only restructuring and reallocating within. Marla, the, yes. The personnel in, that includes our, all our EMS, all our police, fire, is that included in personnel? These right here includes um, only the general fund, but it, it applies also no, to everybody. Yes. You mean oh, yes, everybody, the city. So, work, every yes, every department, 60% of every department accounts for personnel benefits. Yes. So, now this is what our proposed expenditures are going to look like. If you notice, the major one, which is at the top, is the personal services. 45.57 million dollars and as i mentioned since there's only restructuring of personnel you only see a 1.8 percent difference which is pretty much nothing now the rest of the line items i'm circling in red the ones that had a little bit of a higher variance or impact if you can see i have a circle operating supplies which is an increase of 16.51%. I have fleet replacement and vehicle maintenance. Those three line items are the ones that show, I guess, a material and significant increase compared to last year. Now, why? In the other operating supplies, for example, we're proposing a one-time purchase of radios for our fire department. And of course, Chief Pilar can elaborate a little bit of that, but you know, what's more to say, right? Fire, op, fire officials need a way to communicate. The radius, of course, is the number one tool to communicate. Now, we're also proposing to purchase um, technology equipment, which I would like to remind, you know, that that's something that sometimes we take for granted, technology, has a cost, and you know, obviously, we're living a smart, a smart city, and smart world. So, we have to invest in our technology too. Now, the other line item that I mentioned that I circle in red was fleet replacement. This increase it's due to two things. Number one, we're in the second year of the city, a citywide vehicle replacement. If you recall, two years ago, the city um, entered into an agreement to replace all city vehicles. Now we're in the second year. Of course, those, those vehicles include police, police units. Now the other thing is that not only we're replacing those units, we're also seeing that the cost is a little bit higher. Well, not just a little bit, it's, you know, I'm giving an example here of the, what we used to pay on average for a police truck compared to what we pay right now. So from $1,500, we're jumping into $2,100. Now, keep in mind, this cost may seem super high, but the example, this specific example is for a police unit, so you gotta remember that it includes all the equipment inside the vehicle. We're talking about your laptops, your radios, your GPS, everything. And I mean, again, as a far resident, I would definitely, you know, wouldn't want if I have to call the police to show up, you know, in a 20 year old vehicle with no equipment. I have a question. Yes. But when we were paying $1,500 a month, 
We're paying for a police unit, right? Correct. Now we're paying $600 more. So all the equipment, everything on the truck costs $7,200, $7,200 more per unit per year? Yes. But that's, again, that's going back to the overall increase in prices. No, no, no. I understand that. That's freaking a fifth, almost, what else? 50, about a 40% increase? Yes. But that's Those numbers, yes. that just seems very, very outlandish. I mean, I can understand the 20% increase on equipment and materials and all that kind of stuff, but... Forty no. percent. What are we putting into these units? No, with the with the. And emergency. I know it's not police. It's fire, and it's probably every. You know, it's, you know, it's yeah, the man. emergency lighting. Everything across the spectrum, it, it all, all raised with inflation, right? All all the prices went up, and then also what you're seeing with these fleet vehicles, is if the police chief comes today and says, you know what, we need ten units, it can take over a year to get those units, and so there's just this huge. No, no, no. I understand. Issue. I'm just saying because of the price. No, absolutely. Increase. I don't. I mean, if we need the trucks, we need the trucks. Obviously, we've got to provide the the safety and security. But my deal is just a seventy two hundred dollars more. And I know this is just police cars. These are, I said, fire trucks. It's all. Yeah. Do we need to have them? Yes. That, that's you see that that's the. I mean, remember what you started off with. Our major, you know, culprit that's uh, hurting all budgets throughout the United States is inflation. Nothing special difference being bought for the fire, which is important, the police department, you know, nothing unique out of, out of it's, there's nothing special about it. It's the same equipment. It's just more expensive. Yeah, no, and no, so, understand and that. that's what we're running into. I know, problem. I know it's unique. I know it's unique. I don't even know it's done. I don't think you need it. My voice is real loud. You'll yeah. probably capture it. Uh, I just don't see that 40 I mean that forty. What is it, like forty percent increase? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not. I mean, I'm dumb. I don't know numbers very well or anything. But just just a quick review of it. It just seems a little high to me. Like I say twenty percent. I can understand a twenty percent increase on the equipment and stuff like that. Maybe we need to. I don't know. Look at yeah. look at it a little closer. Uh, go out a little bit more to find see what else is out yeah. there but well, well, i think I'm not, guys... i mean i know we can afford it we can do all this but the numbers just seemed but it's actually... and like i said i'm not picking a police department no i know so i mean it's Co and i understand it's equipment as far as public utilities parks and rec i understand that you know they all need radios yeah. we all need all this communication we need the little flashing lights even like the the guy who picks up the dogs are our, our, uh, animal control I get that. I understand it. I just, it's just something that I'm seeing. Yeah. It looks kind of high. Yeah. Mike, Commissioner. Yes, sir. What was the interest rate for a mortgage two years ago versus now? 50% more. That's right. It, right now you can get what, a house at five, six and a quarter? But people are currently, right? I mean, 8%. eight. We're at eight already, yeah. right? So, and we used to be at two, three, so it costs a lot of money and nothing to do with management of our city or department. So it's nothing to do with you guys. It's uh, we see it when we go pump gas or I go buy milk or eggs, whatever it is. It's just the cost of doing business. And it's unfortunate that we're everybody's facing this, but it is uh, due to inflation. And so not, I just want to make sure people understand that we're not there's nothing unique about what our department heads are asking for. It's the same exact truck. Same exact tire, same exact rate of everything the same. They just cost more, 30, 40 percent. And you know, I wish it would it would not be that way, Commission. Well, no, definitely. I understand right? also. I mean, but I'm just saying in one year is a different. That I know. Time, I mean, I can understand it was three or four years. Yeah. It, uh, you know, expanded to three or four years. It just seems a little high. Yeah. And I'm not like I say, I'm not being a PD. It's, I know it's sure. every unit throughout the city. A fire a fire truck. I understand fire truck shit. What are the truck costs now compared to, oh, sorry. I'm going to go into that actually in the next slide. Okay. okay. <laughs> but, that's what I, but I just want to make sure people understand that we have the most responsible people when it comes to utilizing the funds that they have. But in what's really hurting all budgets across, including school districts and any of the government, even the private sector. I mean, we see it. 
Everything is from manpower shortage to our supply no, chain. No, no, no. I see it. So, just go to HEB and we know the difference. Of, yes, sir. You go buy five things and it's a hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I understand it. It just just seemed a little be. It, it, it is high. Be, it's thirty to forty percent. But yeah. at, at the same time, if you remember the survey, their priorities are public safety. So we can't. We're we're not. None of us is proposing. But, we're not going to go cheap on it. We're going to buy what needs to be bought to protect our city from a public safety standpoint. But it is unfortunate it's costing that much, and they're trying the best they can to not only get grants as well. No, and I know why we did it. We, we, yeah. I mean, we cut back, obviously, because when we start leasing some of the vehicles, yeah. and it came back to where we are saving some money. Yes, sir. You know, and I would just try to look at the trend. I know it went up, but, you know, people at home are going to see that number. They'll be like, wow, really? I mean, I can buy three cars for that amount. And that's what the people at home's mentality is going to be. Not today. So we don't explain it to them. Yes, I understand that part. Across to them, it's and kind of what we're trying to get. What I'm, what I'm trying to get at. Yes. yes. No. But it, it was not his money, so it's easy for me to just ask and pick and choose whatever he feels is best. And sometimes I feel that um, I'm not saying it's happening. I'm just saying that I do see this, and I have friends in other cities as well. And I ask if they have the same same uh, expenditures as we do. And sometimes I feel that uh, sometimes. The directors or whoever's in charge of asking or requesting stuff may feel if, if it's would they do those expenditures if you keep their business, it will be their money. And I sometimes there's items that we can buy that can last five years, but we we know in the last five years they come up to the to the commission say this item will be good for five years, and then we see that in two years we're buying a new one. Because some vendor or they went somewhere says that this is the best out there and we ended up always buying and buying and always trying to be on top of everything. I'm pretty sure and, and I know that there's some cities out there that don't have all their police trucks with everything that we have. You know, some of these trucks have, I don't know, I think a hundred lights. And I'm pretty sure that each light I put I put lights in one of my trucks and it cost me like five hundred dollars. And that's just like three lights. And my son of this police, they have like a Christmas tree. And, and, and it's fine, right? Probably there's somewhere out there that says that the minimum lights in the police truck should have, you know, 60. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not into that. I don't know any of that. And I can easily oversee uh, approving items like that because I'm not aware of any of them. But I'm just saying to those people out there that are making uh, purchases and requesting items, for them to think about if this was your money, if this was your company, will you do it? It's a, it's a lot easier for my employees to request an iPhone 14 Pro Max, but they'll do it, and I'm not going to buy it. But it's sometimes within our, our city that not everyone is overseeing and sometimes people may request an upgrade on a software that may cost taxpayers a million dollars, but we need it? No! You know, Windows 10 still works. Why do we need to go out and get the latest Windows? You know, I'm just saying the same thing happened with the, with the cars. You know, I mean, there's a tire that runs 60 miles instead of 50 flat, and we gotta go and spend $12 more on the tire just because, you know, it runs 10 miles more. I'm just saying we just need to be in mind that this is not the business, this is taxpayers' money. And we need to be sure that what we're buying is just what we need. Not because I want to have the latest laptop on my police truck or any other vehicle. That's just my, my two cents on it because it's different when you're running your own business. And, uh, and, and it's a lot easier uh, when you use other people's money to buy what you want and need. I completely agree with you, Commissioner. And Mr. Flores, I don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, Commissioner, so definitely hear your concerns and hear, hear what you're saying. And I can 
um, assure you that every director meeting we talk about being good stewards of of the finances and making good responsible decisions and i think especially when it comes to this to reiterate what the mayor was talking about is we're buying the exact same thing it, it just it's the inflation cost and i understand your concerns and what you're talking about in other cities and how they operate but we have a standard of excellence that was put forth here and it, we're doing things that are in line with our strategic plan and everything that you heard melanie talk about and um so again, I, I can tell you that looking at it from a new fresh perspective coming in, I can um, assure you that the department heads are doing their due diligence and making sure that that we are being good stewards of the city's taxpayers' dollars and that we are putting forth a good quality product for our community in everything that we do in every department. And we got really good department heads here that work hard every day for the community of FAR that that are cognizant of that and they want to do the best that they can to put forth a good product and the silent majority of the community that i receive calls from every day to talk about how good the department heads are doing and, and their interactions and our high quality customer service and all those things we have to be mindful and as a city manager my goal is to give the departments the tools that they need to succeed and sometimes that does come with the cost but again is it frivolous no no it's not it, it's it's being done so that we can provide the standard of excellence that the city of far has been accustomed to here lately. So thank you. And, and uh, one last comment. And uh, I think everybody, uh, every, thank you everybody for your commentary. But those that don't know, uh, if you haven't had the, the uh, special privilege of interacting with Carla, <laughs> and so she <laughs> served the city true. well. She's very, a very uh, you know, very good with the money. And I, I know you ask a thousand questions. You and I get into arguments all the time because you're absolutely wanting to control the cost and make sure we have the best deal. So if there's any doubts in any people's mind, please go see Carla and talk to her about any one project and you'll be delighted to see how she's an extremely good steward of the city of our taxpayer money. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Flores. I guess this third slide, which it's also kind of like go goes along the lines it answers a lot of questions. Yes. It does. Yeah, yeah. So overall inflation and repair costs. Now specialized equipment needed for all fire trucks. Now Chief Pilar helped me gather these facts. You know, he we you know he did his research um, based on trends and based on what the fire department has actually paid in the last three years. And these are the facts. Labor rates have increased an average of 65%. Auto parts have increased an average of 50%. And the specialized, in this case, is for the fire department, right? Fire apparatus equipment have increased 200%. Of course, this is for public safety. We need to fix a fire truck. Correct. Correct. You know, you know, it's kind of interesting because for your following year, I mean, if you're always going to be looking at these, not actual, these not, really, it's not the actual cost of the labor, it's just inflated cost of the labor. But Correct. It's going to go yeah. back, hopefully, at some, some point. That's right. I would imagine, who knows. But, uh, but I mean, it's just kind of, to me, it's kind of, you know, people have to understand that what we're paying right now is not really, it's out of our control because all these things are based on other factors. You know, what somebody decides to charge you versus somebody else did a year ago or two years ago. And then we're limited to who we can use to do these this specialized. specialized work, correct? So, uh, so really it's kind of out of the, the chief's hands, you know, the fire department or EMS, you know, it's just what the reality we're dealt this year. But that's not to say it's going to be the same next year or the following year because it can't be going up 200 percent 200 percent 200 percent right it's it's stabilized. Stabilized. Yeah. we're in the mercy of the market and the economy pretty much so right now we're going through an inflation we're hoping that the economy you know load levels up in the next couple of years and you know obviously we will adjust but yes that's that's kind of like the message that i want to put out there a lot of these things are out of our control. Any more questions about that? 
Yeah. Have people buy more mangueras so they can throw a crow fire. What, what was that? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So now again, you know, I started with the with the increases, but not everything is bad. We also have some costs going down um, from last budget year to this year. We reduce our debt service by 20%, and we're reducing also our transfers out to other funds by another 22.56%. So the combination of those costs going up and some costs going down, it's a net change of 7.84% of expenditures from this year to last year. Now, this same, like this budget that you see right here is based on line items, right? Your personnel, your supplies. I wanted to show you the way it looks per department. Same numbers, but just so that you can you can see where those seventy five million dollars go, get divided into the departments. Now, again, just to summarize, other budget highlights to mention: there were no increase. I already said that uh, additional personnel. However, it is included the third year a collective bargaining agreement for our police department and our fire department. 4% increase for the police department and three for the fire department. We did reclassify a total of 14 IT uh, personnel to its own operating budget, which is teamfar.net. We also restructured some personnel to create uh, a new health department. And we added some health insurance benefits, which it's, um, I guess the purpose is to, in the long term, to save on the claims for the city of FAR. Now, overall, you know, this is the summary of the revenues and the expenses. Usually, you know, you see at the bottom the number, you know, zero, but our city manager was uh, push, you know, a lot to balance this budget to show a surplus so that that surplus, you know, goes into our reserves. So overall, you know, as long as that number is on the green or zero, we're pretty much balanced and good to go for next fiscal year. And that's all I have for the general fund. Good job. He'll, I think, Okay, now just making sure. I'm gonna jump into the utility fund. For the remaining funds, I'm just gonna go over a very, very basic just summary. They're not as fun as our general fund. Now utility fund, I always show that slide too so that you can remember how many accounts, household the city of R has. So we're at 24,700, that includes um, North Alamo. Our current budget, projected actual, and proposed budget for next, next fiscal year shows a change of 3.29%. Not much change on the revenues. Um, in a way, it's only a 1%. We're seeing a 1%, 1 to 2% increase in the trend on the water and sewer being built. The expenses also $17.70 million. We do have a balanced budget. The one thing to mention that it's worth, I guess, mention going back to inflation is that the chemicals costs increased by 64%. It's accounted for already and embedded within our budget, but you know, going back to the fact that everything is going up. Revenue of only increased 1%. And an overall increase in billing costs, you know, postage and supplies, all of those things we've seen an increase as well in costs. So it adds up. But again, we do have a balanced budget and we're good to go for next year also. And where's Ruben? Ruben, so your chemicals, you know, which is a very important 
operating line item for the budget, it's, it's in there. Again, some things that people take for granted, you know, the water, it costs money. To have your clean water, drinking water, which I always know for sure, if it's city of our water, I can drink it because I know it has the best quality. Now, jumping too far, EMS, the other uh, enterprise fund that the city of FAR has. Again, adopted budget, amended budget, or projected actual. In the last column, if you notice, I have a proposed budget. This is where I'm gonna get a little bit technical. Um, it says accrual basis on the last item of the, on the last column, I'm sorry. And what this means is that the budget, it's kind of like a form of budgeting, right? What this means is that the revenue accounts, the budget accounts for revenues being billed rather than collected. Now, because CMS, and I guess why do we do that? There's a reason. The nature of the ambulance services, it's very different than the utility and the far bridge and the golf, for example. You have your far bridge, you have crossings. The trucks literally pay the money as they cross. You know, it's money that it's coming in. The utility fund, you have your water bill. People pay on a monthly basis. They can, they usually don't take, because the water gets this, this disconnected, they don't take more than two months to pay. In the case of EMS, the industry is completely different. You know, it takes a lot of time by issuing the bill and like collection. It can take up to 180 days to actually collect the money. So we wanna show these type of budget to show the true picture of what's being billed, if that makes sense. Obviously, like if you see, we're showing like a 911 revenue. We're billing $10.3 million. Transfer revenue, $2.5 million. We're showing what we're billing, but we're also accounting for and the expense size, what we call bad debt expense. In other words, we're also accounting for an estimate of what we're not gonna collect. This you know, we, we want to be fair and we want to show a true, the true picture of what the EMS fund looks like and will look like. So total proposed budget, $13.8 million with proposed expenses for 13.28, showing a little bit of a surplus of 559,000. We're showing this you know, means that it's pretty much self-sustained. So self Correct. And that's what it's showing, it's showed this year so far. And you don't foresee more ambulances being bought for the next year? Danny? <laughs> not, not in the budget. So our, our depreciation for our ambulances is uh, $230,000 Do you have any surplus that you're going to be selling this year? Yes, sir. We do have uh, we have 20 ambulances still that we have not gotten rid of, and we're in the process with our first department uh, on auction. And is that on your budget? No, sir. That's not. So there'll be money coming in. Yes. Yeah, that's not accounted. This is purely operational. I'm sorry. How much is that? Each ambulance is $100,000 for? Um, so each ambulance, when we bought the, the last three, was $217,000. How much do you estimate? You know, say, this just uh, like this. About $300,000 for each ambulance. Which one? Oh, what are we going to settle for, sir? Yeah. Oh, so the ones that we have, the ones that we have got, are, are part of the group that we bought with uh, when we purchased uh, the old ambulance. So we, we got 130 vehicles for $800,000, whatever it was, 
And so those are about twenty thousand dollars a piece. What we can get for them. Twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, they're old, okay. old, older ambulances. They're eight, 2017, 2018 models. So how long have we had those ambulances? Sorry, sir. How long have we had those ambulances? We've had them since we started because we use them as reserves. So how long have we had that for that one? Oh, so we've had them for two years. So in two years, we, we have not decided to sell the seven. We've got, we've sold 24 of them. We've kept the best ones that we could so that we can have them for reserves from our unit three down. We have. Um, so some days we, we stack up to 12 ambulances and we don't have 12 primary ambulances when we have seven primary ambulances. So we use those to be able to stack those additional trucks. So on those 20 ambulances that we have, have they passed the four years? No, sir, just the seven that we bought uh, initially. So those ones that we had before, how many years have they been in service? The ones that we, the new ones we bought or the ones that we acquired? No, the, the, we acquired. the original. The original. So, so the originals we acquired, they're 2017 yeah. models. They're, they're, so, 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 they're past the four years. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. And they're still working? Yes, sir. They, they, they run, but uh, that's part of our maintenance cost. It's very expensive. Very so, now, so so what I'm hearing is that we have ambulances that have been since 2017. They run. And in the new ambulances that we have, because we're following our excellence for a CFR, we're going to end up purchasing new ambulances after four years. Yes, sir. Hey Danny, the medical equipment rental and contractual services, does that increase uh, from 2023? They basically stayed the same. Yes, sir. But your volumes of patients went up? Right, so that medical equipment rental is uh, the heart monitors, the, the stretchers, and part of that stretcher. So it's a set, it's a set amount for. So it hasn't gone up at all? Like it's, everything. it's not going up there, it's uh, an agreement that we have. So, so. It's a contract. 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 Yeah. So oh, Danny, and just a project, uh, I don't know, maybe the kind of, it's like any vehicle. Yeah, we can keep a vehicle, a personal vehicle, five, six, seven years, but we don't put the mileage on a lot of these vehicles that are being used on a daily basis. Yeah. I think that's more where it is, where they're getting a lot more usage than, than uh, the average vehicle gets. And even the motor keeps running. Yes, sir. So and, and they don't shut, they, you know, you can't shut off these vehicles because if they're somewhere and they have to get up and go, I mean, that's why they don't show up the vehicle. Can't risk having an ambulance not crank over when you need it to crank over. It's like the fire department, police department. You know, that's what, what they, I always question, but I know, I mean, it's when you really look at it, you can't shut these vehicles off because everybody's life, to me, you can't put a value at the end of the day because it could be one of our loved ones. And when we really have to look at the big picture, and I know I questioned some of it, but like safety, fire departments, police department, EMS, we're messing with people's lives. And to me, you can't put a dollar amount on a person's life. And that's, you know, I very strongly feel, and I would, I wish we could change them out every three years, to be honest with you, because you want to have the best equipment out there possible that's going to go to the fire. That is somebody's in need, like the police department, they're rushing to some, uh, you can't, you're uh, all of a sudden the tire flattens. Yeah, I want the best tires out on, on the vehicles possible. And obviously there are special tires. It's all this kind of stuff, right, Chief? I mean, you have special radios that the average people can't go buy because it's special police radio. Radiators. When you put one of those radiators in, we, we can buy a radiator for $300. To put a radiator into a police car, it gets damaged. It costs $1,200 because it's bigger, it's vented. There, you know, there's a lot of stuff. And the automotive and all this stuff, I really understand it because that's what my profession was years back. But I ask these questions so the public can know. I want people to understand that we only seem to really, it doesn't bother us when emergency is there and we need them. But the, on a daily basis, how often are you going to call an ambulance? How often do you call the police department? How often do you want to fire? You know, call a fire department. We don't. People need to understand that. It's like when we're doing the budget, the drainage. Five years ago, what was the highest priority of anything we had? Drainage. Why? Because we were in a flood. It hasn't rained. People don't care about the flooding anymore. They don't care if you do infrastructure for drainage. I'm not flooded. It only happens when we need it. And that's what we're responsible to do what's on an overall. We're not here for 
to set up an emergency. And you know, I'm not, I'm, I know I'm taking some time away, but it's just for people at home. Listen, we're here because we're gonna do it to be prepared 24 seven. And that's what a lot of people don't understand back home. Why do we do this? Because we wanna have the best equipment for the city of FAR. We wanna have the best personnel for the city of FAR. Why? Because these are services we have to provide. So like when it talked about the budget that 50%, over 50% said, okay, we'll take a tax increase you know, a uh, uh, tax increase. We don't mind it. They're being visual. You're really talking to people that really know what's going on out there, that see those increases of everything. And that's why I get it, guys. I know the FAR PD, I mean, fire department, EMS, our public utilities, our parks and rec, the media, everything we have, you know, we're, everybody looks at FAR. What's FAR doing? What's FAR doing? What's FAR doing? You understand, at one time, 15 years ago, FAR was like at the bottom of the barrel. The, the, but we've come from there to now, we're a top tier city compared to, I mean, people compare us to McAllen. And McAllen's a, a, a different animal. That's a monster. But you know what? FAR's up there. Now I understand where you're from. We're getting up there. You know, no, you, you go, I've been going to conferences for 15 years. In fact, my 15th year, nobody knew where FAR was. Now we go to conferences, everybody knows where FAR is. Everybody. You know, we've been, we're on the map, people. Understand. And the people at home, everybody, it's a different perspective of FAR. Why? Because this is what it entails. For us to get to that point, this is what we have to do. It costs money to do good, unfortunately. It'd be great if it was a gift, but it's not. Cool. Yes, sir. Correct. With the column that says projected actual. Correct. 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 So, from the 10 million that we have, we don't Yes. So, 10, the 10, the 10 million plus the two. Well, that's, that's $5 million that we've given out there to the public services. That, we collect. that is correct. We, and we can't. It's just, if we can't collect it, it's just proposed because you're being very conservative. On your numbers. Yes. I guess what the commissioner is trying to say that it's part of the cost of providing the so service. It's, 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 yeah, and it's only to be clear. It's, those numbers are far. Those are far oh, resident only. Yeah, so we're we're providing over five million dollars in free care. That that um, we have EMS and we're losing money and all this stuff, and and here we've seen what we're actually doing. That we're actually billing ten million dollars. We're giving five million dollars to the people, but we do have a balanced budget. That we're doing great. And that's Thank why you. it's, to me, it's very important to present these numbers to educate the public, you know, because a lot of people out there don't really understand. Me, obviously, I'm in the inside, and I see these numbers every day. But hopefully, you know, it's, it's now the public understands the way it actually, you know, actually works, and these are what the true numbers are. And again, the proposed column are projections, but these are projections based on trends.
yeah. where we are now. I mean, you got to understand this is in any medical business, this is an incredible turnaround, and it just wasn't that <coughs> you know administration was involved, Danny, uh, everybody that was involved, the, the, the personnel, the EMS, the strategy, the planning, the meetings, going to hospitals, you know, going to you know talk to private individuals, the city, the intermodals, the you know that took a lot of work. And, you know, all the people that contributed to this, you know, to, so us to provide the wonderful service of the city of Clark, you know, they have to understand that, you know, this was a goal that we had two, two and a half years ago, and now we're even making, you know, a, you know, a revenue for the city of Clark on top of providing this the wonderful service. Because we've had countless people that have been saved in the city of Clark. We've seen them in the city commission meetings. And like Bobby said, you know, you can't put a price on the life, but you know, you know, but this whole endeavor to get here took a lot of work, and you know, my head's hats off to a lot of people, you know, especially Danny and his crew, his chief, his assistant chief, and I see these people in the hospital when they pick up patients, they're extremely, you know, professional. They are really truly desired to be the people that transport sick patients. We heard that also in our city commission meetings from you know people that work in the emergency rooms, you know the, the critical care doctors, the trauma surgeons, you know. So you know it's it's this is a wonderful um, example of what can be done in the city farm. And even if with that five hundred fifty nine thousand was a zero, it still would have been a, a, a win. I agree. You know, for the city of Far and our people, and not only for us, but. You know, everybody we transport, San Juan, you know, all the areas and things like that. So my hat's off to administration, to Danny, to his team, because if this continues and this is true, you know, this is something we've created for, for the city of Florida and the rest of the city of Florida. And I think this is a wonderful department uh, full of wonderful people. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Now, I guess if I, I'm going to move on to teamfart.net. Our latest um, enterprise fund for the city of Far. So again, since it's pretty new, it's been like a, a year, a year and a half in service, along with still construction. I don't have actual numbers from previous year, but I do have actual numbers from this year. And this is the budget that got adopted. The column of the projected actual; those are actual numbers and what we're proposing for next fiscal year, 2023, 2024. This is based on current connections and the trend of the connections that we're about to complete. And pretty much we're being very conservative on those projections. The $6.9 million is based on an average of 400 or 500 connections on a monthly basis all the way to September, plus the connections that PSJ committed, which is 6,400 connections. Uh, we have 24,700 24,700. We're doing an average of 45, like we've been very conservative, conservative. So we're doing an average of $45, assuming like each house, household is gonna pay $45, because the range is between 30 and between, Jose, correct me, it's 80, right? Yes, it's $80. So we're being conservative and we're gonna have some that are gonna pay the, the 30 and we're gonna have some that are gonna pay 80, so we're doing $45. Upgrades, Danny. No, I'm, I'm just saying simple math. Just six, seven million dollars, twenty-three thousand, twenty-four thousand hundred houses. Business in a year, we're gonna make just, just yes. A question. Yes. I, I think just like everybody's saying, our that our net is doing great. Personal is doing great. We're really happy that we are doing this type of internet, high internet for the community. I think uh, that great. I think with partnership with the PSJ is gonna help us a lot. And I think that Jose is doing a great job. And that's it. 
Thank you. You know, one of the highlights that happened, in, you know, we started this pilot program, remember, with PSJ back in the day, 2015, 16? That was like six right. years ago, yes. And one of our uh, volunteers that helps us uh, educate the public and uh, sign up people for the internet happens to be one of those pilot families. And they uh, elaborate when they meet people and tell them, this is what I went through when PSJ was grace, uh, graceful enough to partner with FAR and give us internet. We never had it, never had a chance to have it. And she experienced it from then to now. And her family is connected with us, right? But it's, it's, if you listen to her story, it's amazing how it's transformed her children's ability to excel and for them to be connected with the world. But also, it, you know, what's, what's hidden, the, I think one of the jewels that's hidden here is that we are averaging it out with $45, but a lot of the families that we're seeing are not signing for 45, they're actually signing for much more. But that's not in our budget because that's, we want to make sure that we are we're conservative at 45.
Uh, so I think we need to take advantage of those things right now because eventually if it opens up somebody else, we can lose some of them. So we need to, I mean, if they're going to buy it, pay for it now, might as well take advantage. And then once we start crossing, we open the other side, they're going to come through us. They'll pay that extra money because they're just going to cross that much faster. They're not going to go to another bridge and start having the problems. They're nuts. We're, we're creatures of habit. We're going to use one way and we're going to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. It takes years for people to change the way they do things. But I think that's just, I mean, I, something I really want us to really look at. Okay, and that's all I have for the bridge. Yes, proposed balanced budget. Now, this is pretty much all I have for all the funds, the major funds. What was the yes. interest revenue? Oh, so the interest revenue. So that line item is um, interest generated by the cash that we have in the bank of all the bond proceeds that we issue about two years ago. So we have money sitting in the bank because we're waiting for the bridge expansion to kick off the actual construction. Are you going to be moving that to any short-term CDs or are you just going to leave it there? Okay. Right now it's, it's generating a good amount of revenue. And just to clarify, the interest revenue that we are allowed to generate if there are bond proceeds cannot be higher than the interest that we're paying for those bonds. Yes, but we do account we we do account those that extra source though. As long as it doesn't pass the interest that we're paying out we for those bonds. The same interest that we're paying right now. Are we generating the same interest? Not yet. I'm working on it. I have, I have one more question, Carla. Or probably for Luis on the the bridge maintenance itself, because I know we had that little situation, and I know there's a lot of other areas that need to be. Uh, repaired right. because uh, we got to remember that's our cash cow. That's something we got to take care of. Obviously, it's our gold mine for us. No? So uh, I don't see any maintenance for the actual bridge, the entrances, the exits, and stuff like that. Because, like, you know, I've told you, I've had a lot of calls. I mean, they've already called me that they're real thankful that we start fixing that first thing, but that there's so many other places that they are need to be repaired. Yes. And I think we need to repair them sooner than later because. One of those things cracks or goes down, we lose a lane. We're gonna be losing thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars a day. We don't want that. And we don't want that. <laughs> no, no, I understand. That's also gonna be discussed later. And right now, this is what we consider phase one. There's only four or five different areas. Those yeah. are the priority areas. And then we have a second phase. Uh, depending on how we do by the end of this fiscal year, we can use some of that funding already to repair it, as I mentioned before. Uh, in the past, we were repairing these year after year, and we had a budget for it, but then we went to put it together a maintenance plan uh, or a pavement plan. Uh, right now, we're also in the process of, for the long range, uh, preparing a plan of that, of that nature, but we want to fix as many as many of those issues between here and the, the end of this fiscal year and starting next fiscal year. Yeah, I just didn't see because any money. Three phases. Yeah, I just didn't see any funding for it. We can definitely include it. I mean, we can look at it. I mean, it's just something to look, I'm just saying to look at it because, yes. you know, that's, we can't, we can't afford for any of those things. And we're having, I know at that entrance where there was a shift that every truck would go by, it would bang, it would bang, it would bang. And it, the, the truckers, the trucking companies, a lot of logistics, I know a lot of them, they were calling me, but when are you going to fix it? When are you going to fix it? And so, I mean, I know I talked to Luis and Luis finally got on it and it's, they're thankful. They, I've got the calls, but you know, it's like anything. You have to keep. When are you going to fix that other section because it needs to be done? And there's four or five sections, and they all know because their trucks cross it daily. And again, just to remind you, this is the reason why we show you this proposed budget. This is not set in stone. I mean, it gets adopted on the last week of September, so we will definitely take that feedback. Yeah. And we were also able to bring back the. Maintenance. I mean, the uh, emergency repair fund. That yes. We have before that's something we talked on okay. early on. It's about a hundred thousand dollars, if I'm not mistaken. So that's something we haven't seen in the last four or five years. Yes, oh, we. That, and that's great, but yeah. that might, I think we At need least, to put that right in because our bridge has mm -hmm. to always be like a Cadillac. I mean, you can't let that a tire go bad on it because mm -hmm. the day it does, then we are going to see those numbers start going to the negative. 
We can't afford that. Nope. Okay. I, I, I won't let Luis that happen. Okay. Yeah. It's on you, Carla. <laughs> yes. Okay, so just moving on and finally, you know, to close this presentation, I always like to show this slide also just to, and this is on our website, to be transparent to the public and to remind, you know, again, all the infrastructure, all the projects, on the, all the improvements, everything that the citizens have, that the city has to offer, again, it has a cost. Uh, and of course, you know, we have to issue money to get the funding and repay it, you know, over 20 to 30 years. So this is just a summary of how much the city has uh, in debt. That includes uh, the PEDC, the Far Economic Development Corporation. Now, the important thing that I want to highlight, I guess, is the fact that all our debt payments on an annual basis, it's 100% covered and it's budgeted for. So we pretty much have a balance debt service fund and all of this is covered and oh this last slide i guess just so that you can see at the bigger picture of how much the city of far including all the other uh, minor funds and including our capital improvement uh, projects how much the total budget is, how much is the city running in millions on a yearly basis. So the proposed budget for all the funds and for all the projects that are coming up, it's a total of $276 million compared to $208 million. The biggest change, of course, from one year to the other is the $50 million that we're increasing for the projects that we talked about at the beginning. And that's about it. That's all I have for your budget workshop. Great job. Any... Thank you very much, Carla. Great job. Now, the City Commission will be entering into closed session in accordance with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code to discuss agenda items listed in the public portion of the agenda and pursuant to Section 551.071 through 551.087, the time being 550.
Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. Moving on to item 7C, consideration, consideration and action of any on the resolution appointing reappointing four members to the Far Animal Shelter Advisory Committee. This is going to be to reappoint Dr. McManus, Luis Marin, Danielle Castro, and Rebecca De La Fuente. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It passes. Item 7D, consideration and action of any on resolution appointing and reappointing two regular members to the Planning and Zoning Commission, Danny Wiley, and to appoint new member Ruben Luna. Okay. Any motion? Move. We'll Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. Item 7E, consideration and action of any on resolution appointing and reappointing one regular member of the board, to the Board of Adjustment. Uh, recommendation to reappoint Ruben Luna. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes. Item 8A, consideration and action of any authorizing city manager to enter into an interlocal agreement with the City of Westlaco for Animal Shelter Services as discussed in the executive session. Who does discuss in executive session? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It passes. Consideration and action of any on memorandum, item 7B, consideration and action of any on memorandum of understanding between the City of FAR and the University of North Texas, Dallas for the Texas First Responders Peer Network. Motion to deny. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Item 8C, consideration and action of any on memorandum of understanding between the City of FAR and South Texas ISD for the use of sports complex parking lot for the school year 23-24. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It passes. Item 8D, consideration and action of any on agreement between City of FAR and Zendesk Inc. for TFAR.net customer relationship management subscription software services. Okay. So move. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It passes. That's it. Okay. Yep. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the president, we are adjourned. Time being 9.42. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.